it's Barb at Snail Mail Studio, and today I'm going to show you how I'm going to make this image from the Stampin' Up! Uh, set called Art Gallery. Um, I'm going to make this image kind of come to life. Um, as you can see, it is just one stamp, and if you were to take that and stamp it in any color, it's just going to come out one color. And your flowers are going to be the same color as your leaves, and there's not going to be um, a lot of interest. There are some ways that you can use that, but I wanted to show you what I'm going to do to give it a little bit of life. And I've got this one here, so I'm going to kind of be recreating this. Um, and I'll show you how I did this. So the first thing I'm using is a Stampin' Platform. Um, you can use a Misty. Those are the most common. I do not have a Misty, but when this one goes, I am planning on getting a Misty. And what that does is it holds the stamp in place and it holds your piece of paper in place. Now I have cut this so it's only at a right angle on two sides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just use some washi tape. Um, okay. Okay, I'm gonna just use some washi tape and tape this down. And once that's in place, every time you swing that shut, the image will be in the exact same place um, on the paper. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with the um, green. I have Parakeet Party and it's a light green. And I'm going to go in with a little paintbrush and just paint the leaves and the stems. Now they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to totally go all the way up because what you can do afterwards, and I'll show you this, you can go in and actually paint on the um, actual paper a little bit to connect it, but I'm gonna try my best to get this going. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna do as much as the, of the green as I can. Okay, now the first time that it, you do this, it's not going to be spectacular because you're gonna do it a few different times. So here goes. Okay, now you can hardly see it, but you can see it just a little bit. So I'm gonna come in here a second time. Okay, time for um, impression number two. And you can start seeing that kind of come to life. Now, I'm going to switch over and I'm going to do the flower. Now, when I do that, even though the green will be going right back on the green, I don't want it to run together in any way. So I'm gonna go in and clean and dry my stamp off. Now, I'm going to use three different colors. I have an old uh, Stampin' Up! color called Peekaboo Peach, and that's a light color, and I wanted to give it kind of a blended look. So I'm gonna go in and use this and kind of put that on first. I am gonna mix all of these three together. And that's pretty safe to do. Um, let me see. So these guys are gonna be in the Peekaboo Peach. You know, I think what I may end up, oops, see I did get some of that Peekaboo Peach on the green and that's why I wanted to get that off um, and not have any green on there. It's easy to wipe it off. So I'm just gonna do this. And this is a pretty light color, so I'm going to take a minute and now go in with the Flirty Flamingo. Just very lightly kind of go like that, just to give it a little bit more color. Now you'd always want to use your lighter colors first and then go with the darker colors, because if you dip this brush 
um, over top of the lighter color, when you dip it in this, it's really not gonna make much of a difference. Uh, it, it won't make a difference if there's a little bit of peekaboo peach because that's a lighter color on the flirty flamingo. And then lastly, I'm gonna come in here with the polished pink. I am using a different um, brush for each of these. You don't wanna mix your brushes up. And I'm just gonna do that a little bit on each one. It does beat up a little bit, especially on these um, clear stamps. So you have to work quickly and then sometimes go back over it once or twice. But let's see what we've got here. There we go, we're getting there. And I think what I'm gonna do this time is just take my peach, make sure. And I think what I'd like to do with the peach is just make it go over top a little bit more. Um, I've already got a lot of the reds and pinks in there, so I don't wanna go over that, but I do wanna give it a little bit more of a background color. So I'm gonna go in here with the Peekaboo Peach. I really like this color. I sometimes find the lighter colors are more forgiving than the darker colors. Um, and I, I do tend to like them and gravitate towards them, um, especially within the Stamping Up family of colors. Um, and the, the uh, Parakeet Party is one of my favorites. It's a, a great light green that's just very easy to work with. Okay, so what I've done here so I've gone in again with just the one color and I'm going to impress that again. And you can kind of see that's coming together. It gives it a little bit like a brushed look. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and just kind of fill in a little bit of the green. It did not go all the way because the stamp didn't go all the way, but I'm going to kind of improvise here and pretend that there was a little bit more green than there really was and I'm just going to kind of paint it in place like that. Oh, actually that looks pretty good. I did get a little orange on that part of the stem but that's okay because once uh, everything is made up into a card you really won't notice it and if you want you can even fill in the leaves a little bit more. Just be careful that you don't go too far out because then it'll not look quite as good. Um, so that's that. Now the next thing that I wanted to show you that I wanted to do is instead of just leaving it like that, I figured since I am doing all of this in, um, with a stampin' platform, what I decided to do that really made a difference is after I was done and totally cleaned that stamp, this is called Versamark, and um, I just have some that I use on this little um, ink pad. And what it is, is it is a totally clear uh, ink, and you can use it for watermarking, but you can also use it when you need to stick embossing powder onto something. So I'm going to go in and do the entire thing in Versamark. And I'm going to do that twice, once, and then twice. And I'm going to leave that for just a second while I get my next step out. And I am going to use some embossing powder that is clear. and. How I'm gonna do that is flip that over and I'm gonna lift this up and I always use a sheet of paper because it just keeps it a lot cleaner, but I'll get this on camera. So we're just gonna put that right over top and there's no wasting it because it's gonna be caught on this piece of paper and put right back in to that bottle. So I'm just gonna move that over there for the time being and I'm gonna heat up my uh, heat tool and I will be right back to do this. Okay. 
so I'm just going to come in here. In fact, it's a little bit better if you use some tweezers or a clothespin. And hopefully this will show up on the camera as I go in there. That plain ink turns into a really nice glossy finish. And that's what I've got there. Now, this particular stamp set did come with a die. So you have to give this a minute just to make sure because for maybe not a minute, maybe a, at least a few seconds, you don't wanna go right in there and touch it or smear it in any way. You wanna let it um, dry just a minute, but I think we're good now. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. Now, when you do heat emboss something, the paper does get a little warped. And one way that I deal with that is after I cut out the piece or if I was just gonna use the square, as you can put it in a book. I have a dictionary that I often put things in and just give it a day in there and it'll be uh, nice and flat the next day and you can go ahead and use that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use the washi tape that I've already pulled off just to make sure that it goes uh, through without shifting. Did I get a little bit of a shift? There we go, I think that's good. Okay. We'll just run that through, oops, and bring it back. Now you certainly don't have to do this step, but since I had the dies, I wanted to do that. And what I love about this particular die is that I can pretty easily fussy cut around the edges, but I love it when dies are, um, have the detail cut out. And let me just grab this and I can show it to you better on camera. But you can see how you can, I could never cut out those things. Oops, here's one more. Those little things are really nice. That, that, and that. And it just has a really professional look. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then I'll come back and show you what I've made with not only that one, but with this one. I decided that the purple flowers look good, but it's all one flower, so you really wouldn't have purple coming out of the orange. But I'm still gonna use this and I'll show you the cards that I've made. Okay, so I am back with the finished product, and these are the two cards that I made with the two um, stamps that I did. And um, this one is from the set called Art Gallery, just to recap. And you can see that these, it would be very easy to stamp the leaves in green and the flowers in a different color because they're separate. But um, because this is all together, this is what I did. I just um, used that entire stamp set right there, that stamp right there to make these cards. So that's how I did the multi-coloring on those. And I think they turned out really good. Hopefully the camera will be able to pick up um, the gloss that I put on top. And that just made them really cute. Um, I really like how they look. I think I like this one a little bit better, but this one's growing on me too. So those are my finished products. I hope you like this video. And thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask either here on the blog or on YouTube. So thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day.